Eh, esa zona, que son 224 hectáreas, fueron declaradas área natural protegida por el municipio en el 2006. Recientemente, en el 2018, se dieron unos cambios de uso de suelo y cambios de UGA, y entonces dieron esos permisos para que se pudiera fraccionar dos, dos parcelas. Somos vecinos de Jurica, organizados, eh, tenemos tres años y medio organizados. Tuvimos la oportunidad de reunirnos varias veces con el presidente municipal y nos aseguró que esa área se va a hacer un parque, como se llama Parque Intraurbano Jurica, se va a hacer un parque y ahí nosotros también ofrecimos nuestra colaboración. Estamos apoyando, somos ciudadanos de buena fe, no tenemos ninguna intención más que aportar y esta es nuestra tercera contribución que espero que sea útil y si hace falta hemos ofrecido traer más especialistas para que el parque se pueda diseñar con las mejores prácticas, las mejores tendencias globales actuales para beneficio no solo de Jurica, va a ser beneficio de Querétaro, ciudad y de Querétaro, estado y podemos ser un ejemplo de tener ese parque con esas dimensiones importantísimo para la naturaleza. Hello everyone, welcome all to this first session that joins all of us who are deeply concerned about the natural protected area and further on the interurban park Jurica Poniente. We are all concerned about the future of this very last ecological resource for our metropolitan area. Um, it's an honor to provide this intervention at this very appropriate time before the park has actually been developed. It gives an opportunity for people to think carefully about how this park should proceed and what values it has the opportunity to express Uh, as it is being implemented. This is an opportunity for Quietero to design a world-renowned park that illustrates regenerative principles that protect people, prosperity, and our planet. Uh, this is an opportunity for regenerative spaces, an opportunity to put people, prosperity, and planet in interaction with one another in ways that create abundance across all three of these categories. As an urban geographer, I always look to see what is happening in cities. And around the globe, we have a real challenge. A recent report by McKinsey uh, on the focused adaptation came up with some really startling figures that 1.6, by 2050, 1.6 billion people living in 970 cities will be regularly exposed to extreme high temperature. Over 800 million people living in 570 cities will be vulnerable to sea level rise and coastal flooding. Over 600 million in 500 cities will be at risk of water shortage due to climate change. And two and a half billion people living in cities will, will actually be threatened by food insecurity. The impact on people therefore in cities is enormous. And it's vital that every city is now Seeking to do critical risk assessment. Petit jardin construit sous, le, sous les jardins. Entonces es que está... están trabajando en impedir que los mismos propietarios que tienen jardines construyan sobre esos jardines ya existentes para que no se acaben la, la tierra desnuda y, y los jardines que hay y que ayudan, porque cada pedacito es muy importante para la infiltración del agua. We have come together today, both government officers, members of civil society, and ecological activists to work together in order to better understand what is the better future for this reserved protected area. The good news is 
it can have immediate benefits and it can support a strong economic case. Uh, the costs of these can be huge. The World Bank estimates $18 billion a year in low and middle income countries that this is costing. But yet in investments in adaptation can return four US dollars for every one US dollar spent because it's better to prepare than to have to redevelop after a, a disaster. Um, so cities do need comprehensive citywide adaptation strategies based on the assessment of their climate risks. And I assume that this is something which you may be doing or may be thinking about because of the importance of the area which you are trying to secure. Because the green areas, park areas, will be important in that both mitigation and adaptation. But two words come to mind, mitigation and adaptation. The difference between these two terms, because mitigation is really about addressing the global aspects of climate change and the global warming through greenhouse gases and what cities can do and they can do important things for that. But adaptation, it's been shown that adaptation has, has had less investment, but adaptation is what the individual cities in their local areas should be thinking about, should be beginning to act on uh, because of the risks that it brings to their citizens uh, uh, the climate change uh, emergency. So in regenerative development, we attempt to be better than sustainability. While sustainability wishes to create development in ways that preserve opportunities for future development, regenerative development looks forward to the opportunity to put in place development that creates prosperity and abundance now and that it builds that capital, natural capital, human capital, and economic capital all at once with the decisions that we make in terms of putting together our development. Sí, el segundo punto importante eh, va enfocado a la desem, in, desimpermeabilización de la ciudad, porque la ciudad tiene mucho asfalto y el asfalto impide que eh, exista infiltración de agua hacia el subsuelo. So in the case of Queretaro, we're looking at open green spaces. Open green spaces that many people often will look at as a blank space, a blank slate for development. However, these places are not blank spaces. They are living and vital places where economic activity is already thriving. Cultural benefits already exist and ecological services that are central to protecting our communities with fresh water, flood abatement, um, opportunities for endangered species nesting and migratory birds. All of these activities currently thrive in these open blank slates. They are not blank spates. And so as we look at these places as opportunities to enhance the existing cultural vitality, the local economic services that are provided to farmers, subsistence, individuals, cultural expressions that have thrived in these regions for centuries, we don't want to simply see a blank space. We want to see a thriving economy, a thriving ecology, a thriving ecosystem where we can de build development opportunities that enhance these, preserve these, and allow these to coexist with our inevitable changes that come with urbanization. No es, no es detener el desarrollo, sino más bien hacerlo 
más equilibrado con los espacios verdes existentes. Regenerative development designs these traditional kinds of parks, or it can be public spaces, a wide variety of public spaces, by putting the economy in service to life. Whereas normal development often puts people and our ecological resources into the service of economic benefit. So don't do the same as before. Modify the layout. For goodness sake, use nature-based solutions. I think the key is to build resilience wherever we can. Ecological resilience, cultural resilience, and economic resilience. And one of the lessons we've learned in all of our work on climate change, on sustainability, looking at resilience, and also regenerative development is that resilience comes from diversity. The more diverse our economy, the more diverse our ecosystem, the more diverse our culture, the more resilient each element becomes. And so I would reiterate what Kathy said, we can't do what we've done in the past because most development tends to harm the things, the very things that we need to preserve in order to have resilience and diversity. I, I see several hands around. I think there are plenty of questions and this was the whole purpose of this exercise, to have the questions emerge to open the dialogue, to start the debate, to, uh, to motivate for transparency, for evidence-based uh, discussions, to bring up to the front and to the political discussion. And so that all the participants, all the actors from this uh, related to, to the development of this area participate uh, actively in providing the best elements for uh, the, the optimal decisions around it. I want to thank everyone. Thank you everyone, we are working for it.